Good morning. Welcome to Emmett Grove Baptist Sunday School Hour. And we are uh, back uh, after uh, the past two weeks of studying of Jesus in the upper room uh, on the Passover week. And then uh, last week, our, our uh, hope, uh, living hope, as we uh, read over in 1 Peter, uh, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and, uh, and uh, a hope on this earth and a hope uh, in eternity uh, with him. And so uh, we move on in our study, and uh, we, we have been in the IMs for nearly a month or so, maybe two months, maybe more than that. Um, and when we got to, to the IM of John 14, 6, um, <clears throat> a very, very special scripture to me, <clears throat> just singly, uh, exclusively just stands out that, that Jesus is, is the only way. And that's what he says. He says, I am, uh, I am the, the way. Uh, I, and the truth uh, and the life. Uh, and he adds uh, to that in the end of that verse uh, uh, that no one comes to the Father uh, except through me. No one comes into heaven uh, that he described in verses 2 and 3 of, of John 14. Uh, that, that hope passage that is spoken at many funerals and um, of, of Jesus going and preparing a place but the exclusivity of Jesus Christ as being the only way. And, and I began to think in my heart, and, I, and I've had this before, of, of, of people that are deceived <clears throat> to think that there's another way to heaven, that there's a, there's a chance that there's another way. Um, and there's not. It's just the scripture is so plain about it. So what kind of brought to my mind was, and it just so happens that, uh, that uh, the, the women's Bible study in Emmett Grove were, we're looking at a, a very fascinating book to me, and I, I say fascinating. It's uh, to see where people go wrong and see where people have a false hope. Uh, uh, other religions, uh, and they're kind of separated into cults and, and into uh, counterfeit gospels or gospels that aren't the whole truth. So we're going to examine some of these things is a kind of a series within a series. Uh, we still have one I am to go. We still have the vine. Um, and that would be the, uh, I think it is the seventh of the I am's, but, but we're going to go back and, and, and kind of pick up. And our base scripture is going to be John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I'm the life. Uh, no one comes to the Father <clears throat> except through me. And we've got to look at some things that, 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 that really go against uh, God's word. I'd say against, it's sort of a, a perversion. In fact, the title this morning is Perversions of the Gospel. And I want to read you a scripture in a minute. But before we get started here, um, as we almost began the introduction, let's go to the Lord in prayer because I, we need him. Uh, we need him. We, you need him anyway. You, know, you need him in the best of times. You need him in the worst of times. But certainly when we begin to, to, to venture out and looking at, at, at these, uh, the distortion and perversions of the gospel, certainly is going to get the enemy, enemy's attention. So uh, uh, as, as always, let, let's go to him and ask his favor here. Lord God, we thank you this morning. We love you. We praise you. We praise you that your word is what it is. It's truth, God. It's just flat out the truth. And God, it's for, for people to either accept it or reject it. And um, <clears throat> Lord God, I'm very thankful for those that you uh, that know you as Savior, that you've, uh, that you've sealed us with your spirit and we can understand these things. God, not that we're special, not anything to do with intellect or anything of that nature. How can I a young child come to know Jesus and, and, and be saved, God. It's, it's not. It's not about theology. It's about the heart, God. It's about believing that you are our only way uh, and, and the only hope we have. So we, we don't want to make it complicated, God. It's very simple. It's just trusting in you and believing what you say. How many times, Jesus, did you tell us to believe, 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 believe? Just believe. Uh, understanding will come in time. And certainly it, it, it are, and when we come into your presence, we'll, we'll be a lot more like you than we are now. Uh, to, when we see you, we'll be like you. So God, we hold on to these truths. And so now that we examine these things where people went off track, God, where religions, God, uh, took us took truth and, 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 and it wasn't the whole truth, God. And, uh, and, 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 and Lord, if there's such a thing as spinoffs of the gospel, that we study these things, that you help us. You guard our hearts, Lord, as Jehovah Sabaoth, Lord of hosts. And Lord, I do pray now you forgive me of my sins that I might speak in your place, God, in a sense, as we give this lesson and this uh, to understand, Lord, the, the false gospels in this world and how to help people, Lord, how to help people come to the truth, the whole truth, uh, and that is you, Lord, and you're the source of all truth, Jesus Christ. We thank you and we ask these things in your name. Amen. So <clears throat> we mentioned 
John 14, 6 was our base scripture. Jesus plainly says that I am the way, uh, that I am the truth, and I am the life. And these things we're going to look at this morning, um, that it's Jesus alone. It is not, I just remember, I think it was a teaching in Philippians, a men's Bible study. Um, and um, uh, Brother Floyd said, and he just plainly said it in such a way, it's Jesus plus nothing. You don't need anything. You don't need works. You don't need whatever traditions of men say. We're going to talk about some of these things coming up in the next couple of weeks about tradi traditions of men. But you don't need anything but Jesus Christ in believing in him. We just prayed that. And we just, um, but, uh, but over time, um, since when Jesus came and he went to the cross, he taught us three years, you know, he taught us and, and he was the perfect human being and that he never sinned. Um, and, he, and he was fully man and he was fully God. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And he went back to heaven um, at, the, at the proper time, back to his, uh, at the right hand of the Father where he is there now and where he is in control of all things. Uh, all authority has been given to him. Um, and we, we know that from the Great Commission in Matthew 28. Um, and, and he's there now. That since that time, there's been a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, distortions and perversions of the gospel before. <clears throat> and uh, so as we begin today, we're not going to really examine uh, other religions. There's about three or four. Uh, and let me just, let's just say right off the bat where the, where the base of this uh, teaching is going to come from. And, and, uh, and I would not normally do this because of these books like this, uh, you've got to be very, very preserved. But I do know this, of this pastor that wrote this, David Platt, but this book is, uh, Cults and Counterfeit Gospels by David Platt. And it's basically chock full of scripture. Very little about people's opinion, but it's facts of the gospel and where and where religions go wrong um, uh, when they deviate, deviate from the scripture. So uh, I'm, I'm not on, un, I don't want to say uneasy ground, but I'm very, very careful about this to step out beyond that. I know enough to be, as I say, dangerous about this. But God's word is very, very plain, and so we want to look at these things. We want to know what do we believe. What, I mean, what do you believe? Um, and uh, we need to know these things. Uh, so before we begin examining that, we're going to look at some basics. Maybe it might take a week or two. We are not going to rush through this at all. I, I'm learning as a teacher that that I, first of all, I probably present more than <laughs> than than an hour, you know, uh, worth on a Sunday. Uh, God is just it's funny when you begin to teach you. You struggle with how am I going to speak for 30 minutes? And then it's like, you know, 20 years later, you're like, Lord, I, I can't. It takes, it's going to take me two hours uh, this morning. And that's just growing in God's grace and understanding his word. But before we kind of get into these religions, we're going to look at what we believe. Um, that, you know, true Christianity is based on, is holy, is righteous, is based on God's word. <clears throat> and and what we say, uh, what we believe is that, 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 that having our salvation and having that living hope is is not religion, and I know it's gonna. They throw Christianity. Yeah, it's a religion, and I, and it is by definition. But it's a relationship. It is just you and the Lord. It's you and Jesus, and it's knowing God, knowing His Word, and knowing His Son. Uh, uh, and so uh, we we want to kind of approach this. Now let's just look at the, the the enemy's tactics here. Well, by the way, let's go to let's go to Galatians one. Now, I might say this again, but much of the New Testament writing, in other words, after Jesus went back and after Jesus uh, saved uh, Paul and Paul began to write and, and read a lot of the New Testament, um, that a lot of the books in the New Testament, a lot, I don't know how many they are. I started counting. I just kind of gave up. Not gave up, but I mean, it was our warnings about this, about these false gospels, about half truths and, and how people begin to distort and make kind of make their own religions and, and we're going to talk about the enemy and his tactics but listen to this letter there's two chapters that that really that not we're going to study today but we're going to probably go back to this a lot <clears throat> one is galatians one and it's like six through nine the other one is over in second corinthians chapter 11 so those two kind of books and chapters uh, Galatians 1 and 2 Corinthians 11. We're going to read some of these scriptures in just a minute. Um, but uh, right now. Uh, but listen to this as Paul writes to the church at Galatia. Listen to what he says right here. 
<clears throat> he says, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him, that's God and Jesus, who called you by the grace of Christ <clears throat> for a different gospel. He's amazed that they've so quickly left what they heard to, for a different gospel. Then he says in verse 7, which is really not another. He, and what he's saying is there, there's only one gospel. There's not, not multiple gospels. Only there are some who, <clears throat> who are disturbing you as false teachers and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Distorting the gospel of Christ. I think that's the key phrase, I think, right here in the scriptures. <clears throat> but even if we are an angel, listen to what he says here now. Even if me, I myself, or even an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached, to what the truth is. I'm adding some things here as I read it. Uh, he is to be accursed. It won't be good for that person if he does not come to know Christ. Because I'm telling the false prophets are as much accountable as anybody there is, and their condemnation is, is certainly greater. Verse 9, he says, As we have said before, so I say to you now again, this is a repeat really of verse 8, If any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. False gospels, distortion of the gospel of Christ. I want to look, just go back, let's go back in time. It's funny when you go, when you start to teach about God's word and where people went wrong, because what we're going to find out, just a statement, is not what God said, it's what people said about God. And that's where things go way off. Because when you get away, and I remember a pastor saying one time, he was preaching the word, and I mean, he was, it was stepping on some toes. And he said, it doesn't matter what I say. You know, it does matter. But what I'm saying is don't get offended at what the preacher says or what even what I might teach. It's not what I say is what God says. You know, if I'm saying what God's word says, then then it then you can be mad at me or aggravated at me, but I didn't make this up. This is God's holy word, and I'm just giving it to you. Okay. But let's look at the enemy's tactics here. And you go back to the garden. I always go back to the garden. Where do we mess up? Well, in the garden. And ever since then, you know, the, the major part of the Bible, well, I mean like 90, probably 99% of the Bible is about, well, from the time we messed up to the time God redeems us and comes back and take, makes all things new. <clears throat> so you're not like first two chapters in Genesis and, and, and maybe the last part of Revelation, you know, when God comes back to make everything right. It's really only truly what I would say good and there's good things. Don't get me wrong. The gospels are all good when Jesus came, but it's just man messed up. It's that word of depravity. We, we just mess things up, and God, and God will make it right in the end. But let's look at the enemy's tactics. And it, listen to this. It's never changed. When God said, you have this garden, do whatever you, Adam and Eve, do whatever you want in this garden. There's just one tree that you don't eat the fruit off of, okay? Just one rule. That's all it was, you know? And so then here's, here's the devil, <coughs> Satan. He's a snake. <clears throat> That's why people hate snakes today and scared to death of them. In Genesis 3 1, Satan infiltrated the heart of man. Eve was, was who it was, a woman. And, and the rule was you don't eat from the fruit. So here's what Satan said. And, and his, his tactic has always been to doubt God. That's just it. Doubt God. But listen, he said, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from, from, from any tree of the garden. Now, listen to how he phrased that. Has he not said? And it, it, the doubt here uh, was not that God didn't say what he said. He's not. He didn't say that. He didn't say God didn't say that. What he started to do in her to cause her doubt was, was that you just misunderstood God. That's not what he meant. And that's exactly where, where other religions, the counterfeit gospels and the cults start out. They they misunderstand scripture and misunder and you know and, and and so the enemy has always been doing that. It was the interpretation of the scripture in a sense or what God said, simply said. Uh and, and so that that he deceived Eve into thinking that she didn't really understand what God said. And it goes like we said, it goes wrong right there. And that's really what this study's gonna about be gonna be about. Where did they miss it? <clears throat> these cults and these counterfeit gospels. <clears throat> we mentioned a while ago, the fact is that, that none of these, we're going to study about four <clears throat> religions, and we're not really going to study. We're going to study, this is for God's glory, folks. This is all, this is not finger pointing. This is not, 
you know, you're, you're going to hell because you don't, you know, and they may exactly go to hell. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, that's between them and God, and, and, and only he knows that the heart and you know. Um, but it's not, that's not what this is about. This is, this is about discernment of truth and error. Uh, and, and and maybe trying to help people and at the same time understand how blessed we are to understand uh, that Jesus is the way and he is the truth and he is the life and to believe that and know it uh, and live it. Um, but um, but it wasn't until Jesus had descended back to the Father that, that all of these spinoffs of the gospel and these counterfeit gospels uh, occurred. Um, I want to take you to that other scripture we mentioned a while ago first. And we're going to come back to this. It won't be the first time. Um, Lord willing, Second uh, Corinthians eleven. Now, th this this chapter in Second Corinthians is almost parallel to the to the Galatians. Paul is defending basically the gospel in a sense, um, and so he's doing the same thing. First of all, they were trying they were bad mouthing Paul in that day, saying he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he had the truth, he had the full the whole truth, um, and so it's, it's it's really very similar. But listen to his words right here, and I just want to read this. Uh, beginning uh, uh, in verse 3. Now listen to this. We just talked about Eve, right? Listen to what he says here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Second Corinthians 11, verse 3. Read 3 and 4 here. <clears throat> but I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds, that's where he works. God and, God and Satan work it from the mind. That's where it all starts, by the way. Will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. This, just like see, Eve was deceived, so slick, so so crafty, you didn't even realize it. That it's simple in the purity, being led astray from that. Now listen to what he says in verse 4. <clears throat> for if one comes and preaches another Jesus, we just talked about another gospel. For if one comes preaching another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you have received a different spirit, and believe me, there are many, many spirits speaking that aren't God. As a matter of fact, this spirit is not capitalized, which you have not received, or a different gospel. Here we have another Jesus, a different spirit, and a different gospel, which you have not accepted. You bear this beautifully. I mean, he was giving them compliments here that they haven't given in, but don't do it. Uh, don't listen. So these two Galatians 1, 2 Corinthians 11, really kind of the heart of where we're, this, I want this study to go by God's grace here. Um, deceitful and disguising, uh, and we know these things that uh, even Satan, uh, uh, is, as Paul described, is, is disguised as an angel. He can make things appear as they're not. And let's, let's just remember this. Um, <clears throat> and Satan loves religion. He loves it. Anything. Now we're going to work. What we're, we're saying is John fourteen six. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's relationship. Let's just call it that. Let's just make that in your heart that 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 we're 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 outside of religion in the sense that we know the truth, and um, and and but he doesn't care about religion. He doesn't care about all of these these cults. And th this is right where he wants someone. I mean, they are they are in his. Uh, he's got them. He's got them captured in a sense. Um, and so let's just and that's being that said, Let's remember this. We've heard this over and over and over, but but it's, but it's but it's we must remember this that the devil, even when he deceived Eve, and and he has caused all of the false religions in the world. He's behind all of them, all of them. Because um, if he can get your mind away from God and get you away from salvation, he has won. Remember, his goal is to take down every created human being he can. He he could not achieve, couldn't take over God's throne, you know, and so now it's all about instead of taking over, now he's just gonna try to overthrow people. Every remember what well, remember what we are we're created in God's image. So if he couldn't get God, he's gonna get the, the ones cl that closest resemble God, and that's us. That's human beings, and he's trying to take us all down. Um, even when we're saved, he's trying to make us stumble. You know what I mean? He's he's a, he's an enemy, and he always will be <clears throat> till he's put away. So what we're going to say here, what we've heard before, is Satan never has anything original. He never, God didn't allow him to do that. He didn't come up with anything. All he does is take what's, what is what what was holy and good, good things. Think of marriage, think of how you're born, your gender, um, and all and morality. And and all he does is take what's good and perverts it. And that's why we have these these uh, religions that 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 aren't true. Um, uh, it's just that, that he takes the truth and distorts it and makes it and turns it into a lie. So 
that's that's where we're headed here in this study. So let's move on here. What is truth? Uh, I want to go back to uh, back to the before the cross. I want to go back to when Jesus was standing before Pilate, and this was Pilate's chance. I think this is where Pilate. Man, he had God before him. Jesus was standing there before him. Um, and uh, and he asked about him being a king. This is in John 18, 38. And this one verse I just want to read here. And, and Jesus said, yes, I'm a king. He, he finally, after they had been, this is like the sixth time he had been uh, on trial uh, from the religious leaders in Rome. I think this, pretty sure this was the last one. And and so anyway, uh, if it wasn't, it was number five. But um he said this about coming into the world. He said, he came into the world, Jesus said, he told Pilate this, to testify to the truth. In other words, I, remember what he said? I'm the way, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. But I came, Jesus said, to, to give the truth, to testify, to tell you what's real. <clears throat> and so Pilate, his response to that was, what is truth? Jesus said, truth, what is truth? And that was the question of all questions right there, if he had stayed. But you know, he, he uh, in, in his frustrated mind and, 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 and so scared he was going to lose his position, um, uh, his status as, a, as the leader there over, over uh, in Jerusalem, that he walked out. He walked out. He asked the question and walked out. Didn't get the answer to what did what nature to hear it at that time. What is the truth? So we need to, we need to examine what our truth is. But there's the name of God, and his name is called El. That means God, Omet. And it's almost like Emmett. Matter of fact, I think some spellings are, are E-M-I-T, but the one that I found was, was E-M-E-T, Emmett, Emmett Grove. Uh, El Emmet, he's the God of truth, that everything that he says is true, and, he, and, he, and there's one God with one truth. And it's interesting here in two prayers, that <clears throat> one, of, one of them is a very, to me, is a very special prayer of, of Paul's, the prayers of Paul. Uh, what a good study that might be. First Timothy two five. Here's what he we can he was kind of closing out this prayer uh, as he was writing to, to Timothy. He says this: There is one God, one God, and one mediator, also between God and man. God and men. He said plural. There's there's one God and there's one mediator between God and men. And he says as he concluded here, the man Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only mediator between us and God. He's the only way to God. Back to John 14, 6. You see where this is just nailed together right here. Um, even in King Solomon, uh, reading through uh, in First Kings, King Solomon, he finally built this uh, this wonderful temple, uh, just the marvel of of beauty. And, and, uh, and man, you just read through it and see all the things that they, the way that what that was built with the uh, special wood and the gold. And the, man, it was just, it had to be an incredible thing to look at, behold. And then, so, so King Solomon was praying over that, the, the inaugural prayer uh, of the of the uh, newly built temple. And he says this in 1 Kings 8, 60. Listen to this prayer. So that all the people of the earth, now he was praying over it for Israel, but he went way beyond that. He, he went global. So that all the peoples of the earth may know, remember what we're talking about, no, we got to know the truth. What's the truth? may know that the Lord is God and there is nobody else. There's no one else. What a verse. That's 1 Kings 8, 60. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no one else. There is nobody else. Remember what Peter, Jesus was asking the disciples. They were deserting him right and left. That John 6, 66. Whew. You know, they, they weren't following Jesus anymore. And that, that number, we know what that means from Revelation um, and, and Jesus asked him, do y'all want to go to? Do you want to leave? And Peter said, who else is there to go to? He, Jesus, you're the only one. They're back. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and there is no one else. Counterfeit gospels, cults, and anything beyond that religions are, are, are trying to find another way. Um, so as we move into this, uh, before we begin looking at these different gospels, we got to know God's truth. We got to know what is truth and what that is. So we're going to move to, to knowing this truth. Now, knowing truth, first of all, be saved by the Lord Jesus, right? And have his spirit and then begin to read his word. 
And, uh, and it's not about knowledge gathering. Yes, we need to know about knowledge about that. But it's, but it's very interesting that I, uh, there's a lot of people that know a lot about the Bible that don't know Christ, and, and, and there's, they're, they're, they're in peril uh, in, in eternity. So it's not about just the head knowledge, but the, the knowledge of when Jesus comes into your heart and that knowledge, and it begins to work in a, in a way that, that, that other people, they don't, what, what did the, the, the lost call it? Uh, and I think it's over in uh, Romans. It's foolishness. It's foolishness to them that don't have God's Spirit to understand it. Um, so the importance of knowing the truth. Now, Jesus was in his high priestly prayer. Um, that's another good thought for a study, just to study that one prayer. The, the, one of the greatest, if, got it, no doubt, the greatest prayer ever prayed. <clears throat> Over in, uh, in, in John 16, excuse me, John 17, high priestly prayer of Jesus. Um, <clears throat> I want to read you a verse here. When Jesus was praying for his disciples, prays for himself, <clears throat> 17, down through verse 5, picks up in 6 through 19 for his disciples. And then in 20 uh, to the end there, he prays, <coughs> excuse me, he prays for, for us, for all believers. And really, this prayer is for all of us. But listen to what he says right here. And I'm going to start in 14 about the truth. John 17, 14. He's speaking to his father here. Uh, one of the last uh, prayers before the, the, the prayer in Gethsemane. <clears throat> I have given them, talking about disciples, your word. I've given them your word. Listen to these now. And the world has hated them. There it is already. They're already uh, uh, hostile uh, because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Praise God, we're not. And I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Remember that in the garden. There, there's the evil one again. There he is. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. He's already said that. That's twice. That means that's very important. Now listen to 17 through 19. This is where we, where we want to go here. Sanctify them. He's asking the Father, sanctify them in truth. Remember what Pilate walked away from. And then he makes this def definitive uh a statement, your word is truth. Doesn't matter what I say, what any preacher says, but what God says, your word is truth. And as you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. They're about to go out and take the gospel. And it is unbelievable how the gospel went global after this. I mean, it did. It started in the Holy Land and it circumvented the whole planet. It did uh, this day and time. 19, for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. That is sanctified, set apart in the truth to know the, uh, I think about the oath we make. You, know, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You know, f first we say truth, and, and, and then we say, well, you can tell some truth, but not tell it all. You know, if I don't tell it all, then I'm really not telling the truth. Partial truth is not is not truth at all, you know. Just like a little lie is not is not full truth, if it's given if, if the truth is, is if it's given and with that intent, but the whole truth, all of it, uh, um, and nothing but the truth, and that eliminates it. That's three ways to say the truth, nothing but the truth, um, uh, in the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So it, it eliminates any error, any lie in that. So that's what was important. So the major setback, let's just make a comment about today. Let's just move right into our own living rooms here. But the major setback today in our in the churches and, and, in, in, and even in the, in the precious house of worship in Emmett Grove um, is that we don't know his word. We just don't know it. And, and um, you know, if, and, and I hate to say this in such a negative way, and there is no room for negative preaching. Well, I love that statement our pastor made. Um, there doesn't need to be that, but there's, there's a lack of desire to read God's Word. It's just uh, we'd rather be read to, almost like we're still first graders, uh, and we can't read. But, you know, when you were little and you couldn't read, you would listen to a story, you know. But we need to get beyond that, get beyond the milk and get on the meat, as, as Paul would say. And, and to know God's Word, you're never going to know. Um, even back in the day, uh, Hosea 4, 6, and this verse is... is it's not. It's not new. It's not a. It's not a new problem in the church. It always has been. Uh, we remember even in the Kings and we're coming up where the the book got lost. The book of the law got lost, and they were leading Israel for like a hundred years or more. Uh, and then they found the book. I mean, it's right there, and they found the book. And and uh, you know when when well, I think it was King Josiah, uh, Josiah that, that found the book, and they came and read it. You know, and it was like wow. That might not have been the right king, but I, that I knew that I do know that happened. I should have been more prepared. Uh, I'll be reading through that in a little while, Lord willing. So we'll, if that's a correction, we'll make it. 
But, but Hosea 4.6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We just don't know. We don't know what we believe. Um, I heard this one time, and I don't have any credibility to it, but I, I heard it from, from, from a source that I trust. I don't even know where I heard it. I, don't, I try to write things down or try to memorize things if it comes from some, you know, uh, certainly not off the Internet. <laughs> but did John F. Kennedy one time ask Billy Graham? I don't know if Billy Graham had come to do something at the White House or what. And, and maybe, re, maybe it was a time to talk about, quote, religion. And, and, and JFK, John F. Kennedy, uh, as I understand it, was a, was a Roman Catholic, okay? And, um, and somehow this question, some, something about theology came up. And here's what John F. Kennedy, as I understand, I'm going to paraphrase it, and if I'm wrong, Lord, you, you tell me. We'll correct it. But he asked Billy Graham, now what do we believe? Tell me, tell me, uh, what, what do I believe? Now that's, that's this is not condemning the, 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 the deceased president at all. But that's typical of us. What, what do I believe, Lord? I, you know, what, what do I believe? And somebody else doesn't need to tell you. You need to know it. And so this is the, the shape that we get in if we don't know it. And we, we go back to 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4, when Paul said uh, the simplicity and purity of the gospel, to know that. And so much of the writings we've already said throughout the New, New Testament are to warn us and to identify uh, false teachings. You know, when there's a different, another Jesus and another spirit, a different gospel, that it's, that it, it's not Jesus plus something else. It's not in, in most other religions uh, do that. I remember this quote. I'll write, we'll <clears throat> read this to you, and I probably wrote it in different ways. <clears throat> but religion, quote religion, is really about man trying to find a way to get to the God. I mean, by whatever means. By I start, we're going to Google how many religions are in the world. That probably will blow your mind. It'll blow my mind. But it's man trying to find a way to God. But it's man trying to do it. But the gospel, that is Christianity, is about God coming after people through his son Jesus. He comes after us, not that we're trying to get to him. <coughs> he comes to us. Um, so plain. So we're going to, let's move into to the introduction, I guess, into this, where things go wrong, how things go wrong. Uh, and then we're going to, over the next several weeks, going to look at some of these, uh, some of these re religions that have deviated from the gospel. And so the word heresy comes uh, uh before us in this study, heresies. And, and you may have a, an understanding of what a heresy is, but a heresy is, is, is a lie. I mean, that's basically what it is. Now, a lot of my notes that I'm going to take here, and I'm, and I'm doing a little bit of research on it, but I'm not dabbling. I'm not going to go out there really deep into these other religions. I, I've, been, I've done it before and looked a little bit at it, but I, there's a leash that we need to be on not to go so far into it and delve into it, but we need to understand it's mainly where it errs from God's word. I'm going to say that over and over and over in this study. So most of my notes uh, that I'm going to give you or thoughts are going to, are, are based on this book that, that, that uh, Pastor David Platt wrote, a godly man um, and many, many ministries, uh, The Secret Church, um, and very well loved and, and, uh, 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 and a trusted pastor of the gospel, guardian of the pastor of the gospel. Um, but a heresy, let's define heresy, and I'm going to take his definition. A deviation from the church's historical teaching. Now, wait a minute. You say, now you're talking about people again, but listen to what it says. A deviation from the church's historical teaching, what's been in the past, that, that's really the word of God that I got right here to my left, the word, the Bible, on foundational, foundational biblical doctrines. And the word doctrine, start getting into these real big words, and we can make it very complicated if we wanted to. Theologians make it, I don't know, not, not that it makes it complicated, but, but to try to teach theology to, uh, to a, a person that doesn't know Christ, it's got to just start with, with the need of the heart first uh, and then these other things. And I love to study doctrines. I do. I, I, I love it. I, there was a time that I, I don't know if I knew what that meant, but I do now. Um, so let's go back over that again, a heresy, because we're going to look at some heresies. We're going to look at where things go wrong. A deviation from the church's historical teaching, what God's word says, on fund, on foundational, foundational. What we, what I like to put the nail we hang our hat on, and that I mean it, that's the nail we're going to hang on to, uh, on foundational biblical doctrines. And there are very, there there are many uh, 
but there's some that, that we, we must kind of start with. Um, so uh, remember what Galatians 1.16, what Paul wrote, a different gospel, which is really not another gospel. It's not another gospel. So there's, there's two basic, and if you want to call it an attack, if you want to look at the enemy side of it, an, an attack, and that's really what it is, but it's more of the perversion from the Word of God, and, and all of this comes from the Word of God. What we're going to, the the, the uh, religions we're going to look at here start with the with the basics of the Bible. They just miss it. Some miss it very, just a, a very small miss, but it messes up everything. And here's the here's the two things that uh, that, that Satan has is, is done to try to distort it and pervert it. First of all, it is this 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 hard to understand doctrine of God in three persons, the Trinity. Flat out the Trinity, that God is in three persons, okay? And then the other is when they go after Christ to, to try to, 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 to uh, that he was not God. And, there, and it goes on, and it just really just gets way out of whack uh, from what, what truth is. And so I'm going to do my best by these notes. And praise God for these notes, because if we didn't have this book, I, I wouldn't probably wouldn't have this page, because I don't go this, this deep into things. And we're going to mention some words here. And, and please don't don't lose me or don't lose God here in this in what we're trying to say. So this is an attack on God in three persons. Now let's let's look at what we believe. What is the Trinitarian belief? If that that that's a theology, Trinitarian. I you know, it basically means I believe that there's a God the Father, that there's the Lord Jesus, and there's the Holy Spirit. And they are they are three distinct persons. Jesus would talk about the Holy Spirit in John 15, about he, 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 capital he. He, he comes to convict the world of, of a sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Capitalized he. He's the Holy Spirit. Uh, he's not the Holy Spirit. He is a person. It's not an object. Um, and so is Jesus. So they're, they're distinct, but they're fully separate persons of God. Ephesians 1 Three through fourteen, it is it's God's blueprint of salvation. It starts out with the Father, what the Father desires. He desires that that the people that He created and put on planet Earth that they would be a holy and blameless people. That's what Father God's desire is. <clears throat> so there was no way. So then, about verse four or five, Paul begins to speak of Jesus, His Son, sent from heaven here to Earth to make a way. And when we believe in Him and and it speaks of Christ summing up all things at the end. He's he's going to bring world history to an end, human history to an end uh, in that day, that coming day that's really coming quick. And he explains that when that when he comes in our heart, he seals us with his Holy Spirit, it speaks of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, plain as day. Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. We, we, we had that study. I think we stayed there for a month on just those verses. We got to believe that. We do believe that. Um, do I fully understand it? Nobody really can, uh, but we just believe that it is. Remember what Jesus said, you believe it. Each person, even though he's individual, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, is fully God. They're not part God, they're all God. They're fully God. Just accept it. And although there's three persons, <clears throat> they're distinct and separate, and they're all fully God, there's only one God. I know that sounds like, it sounds like it. That's, that's not good math. Three plus, uh, you know, three doesn't equal one, but it in this... Remember what God gave us mathematics. If he wants to change mathematics, he can do it. Um, but there's only one God. We accept this. In fact, let's just, this is a, this is a fact. That that was a hard thing for, 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 for man to understand when that, when, uh, even though we had the Bible, that it was like th almost 300 years after Christ um, <clears throat> ascended back to heaven that the church fathers actually kind of came to an agreement and I'm sure through the work of the Holy Spirit, or this would not have happened, that the, that the doctrine of the Trinity was was sort of accepted as a doctrine. They were there the whole time, even just like in Ephesians. But but to, to put all that together, that it, that, that was just one God. Um, so if it was complicated to us to understand, are we ever going to understand it? We will when we get there. But for right now, we just believe that it is. But this is where people go, where people take, the Word of God, misunderstand it, and it goes all kind of weird directions here as we'll look at. Um, so if it was troubling to us today, even even me, to fully understand the Trinity, I remember uh, Andrew uh, Huffingham telling us that when he and his wife Whitney went over to London to see Chelsea, that there was a man there um, that pulled up on the street 
in a car, I think he was driving, rolled the window down, and he asked, isn't it something how, this, how God put this together? There, there they are over there in London, just randomly going over there basically to, to uh, really randomly but divinely, that a man pulls up and asks the question, is there, is there a church here that, that preaches the Trinity? That, that story of that man is amazing. Uh, what happened? The man couldn't couldn't read. Uh, basically, was a, if I understand, was like a gypsy, just roamed all over the place. But Chelsea got to know him over there, and he could read the Bible, but he couldn't read newspaper. Um, but he knew the Trinity and 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 was aware of it. So if a man that can't read can understand it, you see what God's Spirit can do. Um, and so don't worry about getting all your questions answers. Just believe it. That God exists. Now let's look. We're gonna look at three things real quick. I know this is. We don't want to get real deep in this and get out there. But when I began to speak some of these things right here, and these words are way over my head. I mean, I don't know if I've ever even heard of them before. But but what we're gonna see when we begin to examine the religions, we're gonna go back to these to where things went wrong, heresies, where where they were deviations from the scripture. <clears throat> the first of these is 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 modalism. M O D A L I S M. It, it, these are theologies, okay? They start with the word. Remember, they start with something true, and they get a, get outside of it. Denies that God exists in three separate, distinct persons, and that they're not equal persons. That that's that's modalism, and and I'll just use David Platt's description that God wears three different masks, or there's three different modes or forms. There's like he's just one God. They got that right. But he just kind of changes into to, to whatever uh, of the parts of the, the Trinity um, that he uh, there, there's no relationship between to say that there's there's God the Father Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit and that that unity of the Spirit Paul, Paul would speak about that unity of the, the Spirit the unity of God being in three persons there's no separation in other words it undercuts the doctrine of atonement. When, when there is no Jesus, there is no salvation, there is no forgiveness of sins. Um, and it really just, and there's so much more. Um, they, they like God just kind of, like there's one God, he just kind of changes forms into whatever whatever's fitting for, for the moment to, to carry out what happens in the Bible. Um, and it's it's really off track. There, it, it, one of the things that, that it denies is that, that God the Father, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, exist all together separately but simultaneously all at the same time okay and but that modalism does not do that it separates it out and and so it, it really wrecks the gospel um, remember if they're going to attack the trinity the triune god or jesus christ himself now the next one is of this called arianism uh a-r-i-a-n-i-s-m and this is a theology and and let me just say this what we're, going to, what we're going to understand here over the next month or so, whenever we begin to look at these, it's not going to be what God said, but what a person said. That's where things get bad off. We already said that. We're going to say it again. Don't trust people. <laughs> Paul wrote this. I think it's in Philippians. I think it's 3.13 or 3.3 3, that he puts no confidence in the flesh. you got to know the Word of God. you got to test the Spirit to know the Word of God, not just what somebody says. So this priest named Arius came up with this in the fourth century. I, I just did a little Google on him a while ago. False prophet. Arianism started by a man, a priest. I don't know what, quote, religion he was from. Denies that each person of the Trinity is fully God. Uh, it denies that Jesus was not fully God and certainly not fully man and the Holy Spirit was not was not that Jesus, he, he, I'm just writing some notes, is Jesus is inferior to his father. He's less. Um, and I want to read something in just a minute to, to explain that there was a time uh, that he maybe, get, maybe gave up some of his attributes uh, as God. Um, but that one form of this Arianism is that Jesus was just an ordinary man. Um and you know what we're saying here, don't you? We're saying that uh, what they're saying, Arianism is saying that, that Jesus was not eternal, that Jesus was created. Um, and there's a, there's a scripture. They're always messing up the scriptures. Um, matter of fact, let's go back to modalism. You say, what, well, where, where did that go wrong? I'll tell you where it went wrong, and I don't mean that in any arrogant way. 
But one of the most fascinating things about the Trinity is over when, when, when Jesus was, was baptized. Matthew 3, this is the baptism of Jesus. And I'll tell you, after the, what we're fixing to read about Arianism is where it gets all whacked out. And I hate using that word, whacked out. It's just wrong. It's, it's just a heresy. <clears throat> but Matthew 3, 16, this is, is Jesus came up after being baptized. Listen to this. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened, and he, that's John, that baptized him, saw the Spirit of God, capital Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, descending on him as a dove, where there's some, something they could look at and see it, and, and lighting on him, came on him, and that was, that was visibly seen. And behold, listen to this, a voice out of the heavens said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That's the Father speaking, not seen, but audibly, and then Jesus Christ being there, the Spirit of God. Come on, that is the one time in the Bible that we see the event where there is where where the Trinity is manifested all in one time by voice, by sight, and by the presence of Jesus Christ being there. So that modalism goes totally against that scripture. Arianism goes against um, uh, a scripture that is um, uh, that is found over in Colossians, um, and I love this verse too. Uh, let me find that real quick. Colossians chapter one, Col man, I tell you what, the beginning of Colossians uh, uh, is is packed with some Holy Spirit right here. I'm telling you, uh, for me anyway. Uh, first Colossians and about verse fifteen, he says this. <clears throat> Paul writing to uh, Colossae, he's talking about the imperial. It's worth reading that whole chapter, but I know that um, we must move on. But here's what he says here, just taking it right out of uh, the context of, of just glorifying Christ. He is the, this is verse 15, Colossians 1. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So Arianism says that, hey, here it says that he, he's just the first person created in a sense. Wrong, we know that. In the beginning, the pluralistic, in the beginning, God, and, and uh, when he made man, let us create. He was already there. He wasn't created. Um, but they say that he's inferior to his father, he was an ordinary man until his baptism. And his baptism is when God sort of adopted him as his son uh, and that he's not eternal. We just mentioned that. And, and listen to me, this is a very, very much, and I don't know this, I didn't know this until I read this, but I but I did, I do think I understood it from the past, that it's a core difference between Christianity and Islam is because Jesus was there and he was a good man and he was a good prophet. Um and there's another religion that really misses misses misses, misses this um, and goes terribly wrong. Um, uh, but that's the basic difference. That's misunderstanding Arianism that he was that Jesus was created and he was not the the, the divinity of Christ. When that is challenged, uh, one of, one of the things John would write several times, and I can give you documentation on this <coughs> about the Antichrist. It's not necessarily the excuse me the Antichrist at the end. But those that deny that Jesus was the Son of God, they, they, they deny that, that, that he was God. It plainly states uh, in, in the epistles over there when he was warning the, the church, don't believe these things, that he was God. He was fully God and he was fully man. Um, but not, not to believe these things. Um, and so modalism and Arianism, two, two uh, uh, errant theologies that start out with God's word, but, but it gets distorted, misunderstanding scripture or what have you. The, the, the third one here, and there, there may be way more of these ologies, these theologies about God, is polytheism, and, and that is basically just, that's idolatry in, in its purest form where there, you just have a God for everything, uh, Hinduism and some other ones where, you know, they have millions and hundreds or hundreds of thousands of gods, God for every occasion. Um, remember Paul was, was over, I think it was in Athens, and he found a monument to the unknown God. I mean, if we miss one, we want to make sure we get, you know, that's poly, you know, that's certainly, remember what it is, what the Trinity is, one God, three distinct persons, individual, fully, all fully God, but only one God. And, and so these are errant theologies um, and they're against Christ. Now, I want to close with this this morning because we're going to take some of these things we talked about misunderstanding the trying nature of God, mis certainly in within that, mis if we miss Jesus, we miss missed everything, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, it's just, uh, um, it's just, uh, it's just a shame, it really is to, to be, to have religion, 
and missed Jesus in it. That's why he wept when he came to Jerusalem. We, we mentioned that. He walked into the city and he looked and he wept. And he said, why did he cry? Because they missed the day of the visitation. They missed Christ uh, to miss it. But let's go back to a very, very deep theological um, reading right here in Philippians, known as the Kenosis passage. We mentioned this not long ago. It might have been last week. But it speaks of Christ in his humanity uh, coming to earth and the things. And a lot of things go, go wrong here for, for those uh, that, that have been um, led off into a, a bad direction, a wrong way. I want to I want to bring back the parable of the wide gate and the narrow gate too because the narrow gate is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we know that. And Jesus said very few will be on it. But the way is back to him. And the, but the wide gate is, is the path to destruction. A lot of people will be on it. And the wide gate is not people that just say, I hate God, I don't know, atheists or whatever. These are people that think they're, they're on the right path. You know, they think they're okay and they're not. Uh, it's not just those that deny that there is a God, which is very hard to defend. But this passage, we'll, we'll close with this thought right here. Speaking of Jesus, he says, have this attitude in yourselves. This is Paul writing to Philippi church there which was also in Christ. And he, there, here he goes in verse 6. Who, although he existed in the form of God, he was God, <clears throat> did not regard equality with God to be a thing to be grasped. In other words, he's equal to the Father, he's equal to the Holy Spirit. But that, that, but that he would take on flesh, he goes on to 7. Why, why, so why does he say not to regard it as equality with God? Yes, he was still equal, but he was giving up some of his benefits deity benefits never did not become god and in his seven he explains this but he emptied himself taking the form of a bond servant being made in the likeness of men he became a person in a sense he did I mean, it's a fact being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself he didn't grasp it to, to be less equal with god he didn't look at it as being demoted from heaven but he humbled himself. Humility is so key in coming to know Jesus. If he humbled himself, Lord, we need to be humble. By becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. That's where we, I think we read that last week. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. When he came and, the, and his mission was completed at the cross and it was finished and he was resurrected and he ascended uh, 40 days later. He's at the right hand of Christ, all authority given to him. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that's what he says here. So that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, he's what he's saying, that anything ever created, everything that exists will know that, he's, that he is Lord uh, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. You know, it's an amazing passage here. The knowledge, kenosis means knowledge, to know this it, it, yes it's it, it's hard sometimes to get your mind wrapped around it we believe it we believe that he's fully god that he came from heaven he was not created and that god exists in three distinct persons to believe these things so next week lord willing we'll, we'll begin to venture out to see how people really leaders man the ones that paul said have you know I, I put no confidence in the flesh began to mislead people and i'm telling you that happens, and over hundreds of years, it becomes embedded, in a sense, and uh, and so we're going to look at those things, okay? And y'all be praying for me as we teach these things, because we going. This is about God's glory, and certainly not to bring anybody down, not to point fingers at anybody that that is misled. But we need to have uh, compassion for these people where they miss the truth, and so this is good for us to know, okay? It's good to know. When we witness, it's good to know in our own, own heart, and it makes you very, very thankful that you know the truth. And uh, because the traditions of men have misled many, many, many people. God thought God gave me this morning. I knew Jesus said it, and I wrote it, spent a few minutes this morning for next week. That I believe what my daddy said, or I believe what granddaddy said. Uh, and we'll, we'll save those thoughts. But it's not what granddaddy said or what daddy said. It's what God said. And that's what we want to be. So let's go to him in prayer. Father God, we thank you this morning for your truth. And I pray you help us to understand we must accept what the Bible says. When, when, when Moses penned the very first, in, first verse in the Bible, in the beginning, God, he didn't explain where you came from. He didn't explain who you were. We just accept in faith the first verse that you're God and you're there. And after that, everything that you say, we believe. 
of not to question the things of that you want us to understand. They're 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 we're able to understand them. But there's some things, God, of you that that we won't ever understand on this earth. Uh, but we accept them. We know you're good and holy and righteous. And uh, so, God, help us. Help us in this study. Help us to to be appreciative of the gospel. Uh, of, of our salvation and our faith, God, how blessed we are to know it, that others might come to know you and that we would know the difference between the truth and, and, and Lord, the most dangerous things are those that are very, very close to the truth, very close to the truth. But there's error in it, God. It distorts, it contaminates the whole, the whole body, the whole lump. As we think about dough, when, when they put a little bit of leaven in there, it affects all of it. And so does a little lie. So God, help us as we study. We love you, Lord. We thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And there's there's no other way into your heaven and into your presence apart from you. Nobody's going to see the Father or anything in heaven uh, uh, apart from you, Lord Jesus, and and your salvation uh, through believing that you're the Son of God and that we're sinners and we need help. Uh, And you're the only help. There's only one mediator, and that is you. And we thank you. Uh, Take these words, Lord. Help us to, to believe them in such a way. Help our unbelief. Uh, to be convinced of these things and we might help someone else that has gone astray. In Jesus' name, amen.